conversation with Ms. Simran Noon, who is the Executive Vice President and Sales Head uh, with Colors TV. We are really uh, privileged to speak to you today. It's my privilege to actually be of any kind of career guidance that I can give to students who want to come into the media industry today, who want to work for a TV channel. My whole endeavour today will be to tell you the hard facts, the reality behind what you see on the TV screens. It's not just about glamour, it's not about you know, just all of us having a lot of fun, but there's a lot of grit and a lot of hard work that goes into this. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have, which can be of you know, guidance to students looking at our industry. How did your journey begin into this field? So I think when I was in my, um, you know, in, in my graduation, I graduated in economics honors from a very good college in Delhi. I was very fascinated with with media and uh, and also fascinated with advertising. So it was it was more out of you know 24 years ago the options you had were very few and you know media was one of those sectors which is still up and coming. And I think I've always been a risk taker and a maverick. So at that point of time, I. I didn't really know what this whole function was all about and but I did have a fascination for media so I was very focused that there were a couple of media colleges that I wanted to go and study in and I studied at the Times School of Marketing which was an in-house business school run by the Times of India and from there I actually understood what the media departments what what media is all about and where are the what does a TV channel do what is it what does a newspaper do what does an ad agency do so these are the things which I learned over there and somehow I just had the flair of her, the flair and the personality and that fact that I love meeting people. So these are things you don't know so much about yourself but these are the things which, which I thought were like what was more about me and I should explore an, a profession which can give me all of this. So from there I went on to the advertising sales department with the Times of India, worked for a few years over there, then worked with Sony Entertainment Television. Then I worked with Star TV, then I worked for Z TV, and now I've been with Colors. So somehow it was more like a flow that you know you kind of knew not so much about your, what the function was going to be, but enough for you to take that plunge. And somehow it turned out to be something which which was like actually something which was my calling. Wow. So would you just uh, give us uh, just about how your day looks like? As to how how do you start? And I think I would encourage everybody when you have a work life, always have a passion which is outside your work, which gives you the whole completely different, you know, discipline, thought process, people you meet. We launched Big Boss about a week back and about a few days back. So the past couple of months were actually spent on strategizing who are those people we want to go and target when it comes to Big Boss. What is the show all about? So for example, the show is a little edgy, the show is a little youth based, it's a little voyeuristic. So a typical traditional brand may not want to come on to that show. So we, we know the kind of content that we are showing on a show like that. comes to us we deal with the TV media planners because that's what we represent so typically a media planner today will decide okay 80% of his money will be that 30 second spot that should I put it on colors TV should I put it on Z TV should I put the spots on star TV or should I put them on digital or outdoor so we've got to go and pitch our channels being different the best the how is it that we can do a better job versus our other competitors. It's not about just running the 30 seconder. How is it that the brand, a client's brand can be integrated into our programming? So this has become embedded program, embedded content, in program placement, like the way you see in movies and we spoke about Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara and you know the James Bond movies where Motorola has been used very convincingly. A brand is integrated into our content which becomes very convincing for the customer because it's very different to 
a spot that's going where you're you know running a spot where you you're almost forcing or you know shouting out to buy uh, to a consumer to buy a product but when it's weaved in with characters that a viewer idolizes characters that the viewer is connecting with and when those brand integrations are weaved in it actually has a message which is very very big and you know it works very well for the brand we would really love to uh, know about some of your experiences which is at the same time uh, given you a lot of uh, you know uh, challenges and it has been even exciting to work on it so the show was called idea presents khatro ke khiladi we launched our channel on the back of that program and idea cellular which is launching in bombay and of course they were available in the rest of the country but they really needed a very big media media blitzkrieg in the city of bombay and they knew that when we were going to launch our channel we were going to plaster the whole city which is bombay is a very important media city it's a very important financial city so we they knew that we were also going to do a very big launch here for us to have that opportunity was one of the most memorable ones i can talk about how we had to convince them about that the channel will be something that will take off nobody has seen the product but if people come and park a lot of you know their faith that gives us a lot of uh, you know uh, lots of uh, lots of uh, uh, what's it called confidence that we got to go do things right for our clients i think that was one of the most amazing experiences nobody seen the product but they want to put money behind it typical tv channel like ours where we have you know we handle four channels we'll have about about 30 to 35 people who are frontline sales and the typical personality of that person is they need to be mbas and uh, from um, top marketing colleges and uh, somebody who has an outgoing personality somebody who likes meeting people somebody who we feel can go and connect with somebody make relationship with clients and also be very good at number crunching because our business is a lot about data and data mining and you know uh, getting the making the best deals for the clients so about 30 35 people out of a sales force or about 70 that that my department has will be in the frontline sales then we also have a very important department which is the media planning strategy department those guys are actually the guys who churn out numbers for us tell us what are the best shows which will work for a client core ad sales media planning uh brand integrations these are the three main roles available and of course we have a we call them our back end support which is a traffic team the guys who actually put it putting in all the uh, release orders all the bookings and putting it up live in the media planning part there is a lot of data crunching because let's just imagine the 800 tv channels up in up in the air today there are about 3 4000 publications which are recorded enough which are not recorded there are like 200 odd railways uh, uh, 200 odd radio stations there's so much of digital uh, options ott platforms available so the media planners job is actually very complex today and you've got to be very clear uh, very analytical you've got to like your numbers and because there's enough of churning of data that's required for a job like that and then to simplify it to go and present to a client you know or to a channel and negotiate after you got all your numbers in place because that's when the negotiation comes in so when the two parties negotiating for example we meet the media planners at an ad agency and their client and if you don't you can only negotiate if your back end data is clear a golden word in mba is a bare minimum we don't typically look at you know colleges who would be like you know blue blood or pedigree so i think the first thing we go is that the because it's a sales profile we're looking at that person should have a pleasant personality should be a quick learner should be uh, in, uh, you know giving you that whole thing of this person has can you know imbibe trust have a lot of integrity uh the way that person thinks through questions standing on their feet because sales is a lot about it's going and making that deal happen then you can't keep going back and forth so you've got to actually close your 
close a lot of staff on your first meeting. People who've gone to management schools because you know they education is very important. I think it takes you a long way. You may think that you may not utilize your management degree soon after you get into a job because a job just seems like a job. You know, why did I need to be an MBA or a graduate in a very fancy subject? But trust me, those things along your way, along your career, there's so much conversation, so much information that you can share and learn from a client that it's important for us to have the basic qualifications. I call it a basic qualification today, which is an MBA to get into a job, which is, which is you know, to do with sales, product, marketing. They all linked up. It doesn't matter where you come from, which school you're from. What matters is that if you're going to be sitting across a person and you have those 10 minutes with a person to make a sale, it doesn't matter what degree that person comes with. Whether it's an international degree or whether it's a, it's not, it's a very uh, unknown college. Don't chase the money, chase your experience right now. Money should be a derivative because money is something that will come to you in your life. But make sure that you stick to your job. Don't be a rolling stone because a rolling stone definitely doesn't gather any moss. 